In a previous video presentation, Matt, Gary and myself had a little look at wiring up a direct online starter. Really helpful information, especially for AM2 and AM2S, so if you've got that coming up, go and check that other video out. But what we're interested in this video, Matt, is a little bit of a variation on the theme of the direct online starter. This is great, this is fantastic if you've got uh, a direct online starter exactly where it needs to be, close yeah. to the motor, and you're going to operate it from that yeah. position. But if we want multiple positions of operation off, we want to operate it from some distance away, we need to start thinking about wiring in a remote start-stop yes. connection. Yeah. So how do we go about modifying our existing circuit to connect up a remote start-stop? Okay, Jay. so it's, it's, it's really quite simple. Okay, so like you've said here, you've got your remote stop starter. Yep. I've also put in a remote stop mm -hmm. and another remote stop down here. Brilliant. Okay. Okay. Just 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 to basically show how how it all um, operates. Yeah. It's really important also to say that you can have a remote stop by itself. Yeah. But you can't have a remote start by itself. Ah, uh, right. Simply because you must be able to stop it. From a position where you start, where you can yeah, start it, so sense. you know it, yeah. on a conveyor you don't want to start system, it ten meters away, and then something goes yeah. wrong, and you have to run, <laughs> run but, but the machine to get but it. But the stopped. stop buttons can be um, um, can, can be um, placed anywhere. Fantastic. So we have to slightly modify this, only yep. very slightly. Basically, we just disconnect this connection here that goes down ah. to the stop button. So it's this yep. link. Then we must. It's only a small wire, yep. actually, physically. Just have to remove it, and that's absolutely critical, isn't that's it? If we critical. don't remove that, then actually work. this won't work, no, no. and you might be hitting the stop button particularly, yeah. and it won't, and it it won't stop it, the circuit. It won't do the circuit. Very it, it won't yeah, do so that's yeah. key point. Yeah. Yeah. So again, like we said with the retaining contacts number mm -hmm. thirteen and fourteen, yep. they're in parallel with the start. Yep. Simply, we just carry this on to be in parallel with this one. Okay. So again, you just connect that one to there, yep. and then on this one. I'll come through here. Got it, yeah. Okay. So as you can see, that's in parallel with yep. this one. Yep. And so all three connections are in parallel. Fantastic. And even before we start wiring up the, the stop circuit, you can actually already see how that's going to work. If you push that start button, it brings on the coil. And if you press uh, that start button, that's going to bring it's on the coil as well. Cool. Yeah. Brilliant. However, it's this connection here mm. that is actually going to stop it from working at the sure. moment. Yep. So, like I said, so this, so we've got a permanent live connection up mm -hmm. here. Yep. We've got a permanent live connection here, and now we have a permanent live connection here. Sure. The key is now we need to link out the normally closed stop switch, mm -hmm. and that must be done on this side of the circuit. Yep. Okay. It's no good doing it from this side to there. Mm -hmm. It has to be done on this side from the side that's not normally live. Sure. So again, that link is just a small wire going straight down. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Yep. And then, from the stop button, from the other side of the stop button, that then just comes straight in to there. Right, and actually if you look at that, the normally closed switch is wired in series, in series with, with that one. normally closed switch, yeah. right? So start button's in parallel, yeah. and the stop, stop button's, button's in, in series, series. I like yeah. that. And it's nice as well, you can see, if, if this was very, very remote, we've got three conductors, haven't yes, we? That's what we're aiming for between the two connections. Yes, yeah. Not, not, in, in some cases, you might, you might think you need four conductors, but yep. you only need three conductors because of that link wire. Yep. And like I said previously, if you've got 10 amps of current flowing through mm -hmm. here, and you, you measure 10 amps there, yep. you're only going to have milliamps yep. flowing through this because this is only energising the coil. So it's only whatever current this is drawing, yeah, which, which is, is pretty small. Which is small, and that means this, what they, 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 these remote stops starts can be quite a distance away yeah, with and only be wired up in small wires. Clever. So that's just a remote stop mm -hmm. start button. Yep. But I just want to bring in, really simply, how you'd bring in the, the additional stop, additional buttons, stop so, yeah. buttons on there. So you might have multiple stopping points around yes. a, a workshop or something like that. Con a conveyor belt system. Yep. Might oh yeah, be, yeah. Is, is multiple stops a, along yeah. the length of it. Yeah. 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 Only start in one position, but yep. it can, can be stopped anywhere. Mm -hmm. So again, this one, everything is just wired up in series. Uh, okay, got you. So we've got one there, the normally closed stop button here. Yep. We just simply come down to the another remote stop button here. Okay, yep. And then as it comes back in to the direct online starter, it then uh, right. just goes into there. And again, if we tra trace that round, we can see that we're going in series through that one, in series through that one, in All series through that one, in series through that one. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant, that's really clever. I love that. Yeah. So I've known 
who I've seen before, hundred, you know, hundred meters yeah. of cable, yeah. all just wired up in yeah. very small sort of tricore, tricore flex cable, yep. and it's um, only one mil, and it's controlling maybe a load of ten amps. Something else I'd just like to bring your attention to yeah, are these this, contacts. This mystery here. contact. We've not done anything with those. Okay, yet. So what are they going to be for? These are um, labelled uh, numbered ninety seven, ninety eight. Mm -hmm. yep. Every remote, uh, every overload relay has them. Mm -hmm. And these are for maybe if we had an indicator lamp. Oh, okay. Okay. So in this case, then mm -hmm. we would need an indicator lamp somewhere. Yep. So that can be situated um, anywhere, anywhere you want, basically. Yep. So if we was to say have an indicator lamp down here. Yep. Okay. And what we need for that, then we need a neutral, obviously, going to it. Mm -hmm. So again, it's important that the neutral would be coming from the, this connection the permanently here. Permanently on side, permanent, yeah. yeah. So again, that would just link across all the way. Down to there. OK. And then we take a live feed, again, a permanent live feed. So it yep. starts to become a little bit messy with all the wiring in here. But I think it's quite simple yeah goes into again it doesn't matter if it goes into 97 right, or 98 are, yep. and then it comes out of 98 I see and then that goes then to the indicator lamp so let me make sure I've just got this right so in the overload this contact is normally when when the system is healthy yes when this hasn't tripped that's connected and that's disconnected. That's just, yeah. So if the overload should operate, so yes. if the motor jams or starts yep. to draw too much load for some reason, the overload will trip, that will disconnect the coil, yes. which will obviously disconnect the uh, contactor. Yep. Uh, but at the same time, that will close yes. and connect that indicator lamp up. So that would show the overload has tripped. That so it's not up. just a case of, the contactor has been turned off. No, no, definitely not just turned off. The overload has actually tripped, yeah. so you know there's a problem with the yes. circuit and it's yeah. not just someone pressing the stop button yeah. by accident or yeah. something. Right. And, and like we said, normally closed, normally open, yep. and they're both in reverse operation. So as Clever. soon as that one goes out, that, that these are interconnected somehow, and so that one will go from a closed position to an open, goes from an open to a closed. Fantastic. And then the indicator comes on. That's brilliant. It's really nice the way you built this up, Max. We've gone from you know a fairly simple circuit that we could trace, and if, if we'd started with this, you'd yeah. sort of look at it and go, you know, yeah. what's that all yeah. about? But actually, just by taking it one conductor at a time, you can very it's clearly see where it goes. And I, th yeah. I think that's quite an important tip, actually, when it comes to wiring up direct online stuff, or indeed any uh, complicated circuit or control panel, yeah. pick a conductor. And follow that conductor along, yeah. then pick another one, follow that conductor yeah. along, and that'll help, help you with your wiring as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's it, in industry, there's other things that can go on yeah. with wiring these, and, and especially when you go up to one, mm. and you can see multiple wires going all over to, yeah. to time switches as well, but yeah. the basic operation of an, uh, to, to get a motor working yeah. is, is through a direct online starter. And yes, it looks more complicated, but in reality, yeah. in, in in actual, it's, it's not that complicated as That's long it. as, like you said, you just take it one conductor at a time and you think about what you're doing yep. as, you're following, yep. as you're following the circuit through. Break it down into stages. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing those variants with us, Matt. Really yep. appreciate that. That's good. And uh, I think we, we end this video in the time honoured fashion. Yep. yep. Okay. We hope this video has been has some been help. Some, really? <laughs> <laughs>